pretty amazing working with my wife. So I know I'm working with a partner that's just as dedicated as I am. Now, working with my husband is has its challenges because we're together all the time. It is an art form, what we do here as far as metal shaping, especially the interiors, paint colors, matching it to interiors, um, wheels, I mean everything goes hand in hand, everything has to be complementary. GCD actually stands for Gillen Custom Design. Gillen is a combination of my partner's name and my name, Gil and Linda. My name is Linda Nylon and I am the owner of GCD Auto Studio. My name is Gil Mungi. I am one of the owners at GCD Auto Studio. He has a respect for what I do here. I have respect for what he does here. GCD, you know, we're not just building cars, we're building relationships. I'm the realist, he's the dreamer. Because it's not just about the build. We're 100% married to the ride. creative staff and I have to say um, I mean they all are creative in their own right but Jay our painter really really stands out my name's Jay I'm the painter here at GCD Auto Studio um, in the past he's done some uh, not just amazing paint jobs but he's also done a lot of faux patina which is just when you watch the process and how he's doing it you have no idea what to expect in the end and then when he's done it just it looks absolutely perfect. I've been in the industry for 24 years now. I've been painting for 21 years. He's great at blending. He's great at coming up with some, you know, some of the custom colors like you see in your head. You can't quite explain it. You, you sort of tell him what it is and then all of a sudden that color is on the speed shape and it just looks outstanding. And I have a love for art. I've been doing art since I was a kid, uh, all, all throughout high school. And there was something about painting that I looked at it as an art. You know, it's what people see when they look at the car. You know, it's the color that draws people to the car. He is the one who's painting the 55, obviously. And we picked this uh, cool, it's called Seamus Green, and such a pretty color. So on this 55 Chevy, Gil and the client chose a color, went with something that was close to original. The client has this little die cast model of the actual car, it's, it's adorable. And we're going to be painting that for him. And his thing is that each car he's had, he's always had one of these die cast models. That's one of the creative things that I was able to do with automotive paint is just apply it to everything. You know, I also have a uh, passion for diorama building. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a nerd, I have a, a toy collection, you know, and I do a one, six, one twelfth scale Dioramas, all hand built. One of my passions, you know, the creative side of me. So it's Camaro time. This 1969 Camaro rolls into the shop, over 900 horsepower. We post this little video up online, it breaks the internet. Over a million views on Facebook, over a million views on Instagram. People love this thing. I love it. Everybody knows I love Camaros. I can't wait to get started on this thing. One of the most important things in the handcrafted interior business is creativity. The clients come to you and they want you to go ahead and take the reins and produce this award-winning interior. A perfect example of creativity is now having Tyler on board doing these CAD designs. We're able to go ahead and take that to a different level. So now we're able to take design, put it into the computer, change proportions, change dimensions, and really, really elevate our design factor, allowing him to explore all his creativity on a project. So we turned him loose on the 1969 Camaro. What better way to start his creativity process? So this 1969 Camaro rolled into the shop and I was handed a piece of paper, a nice picture of the rendering that we would like it to look like, and I'm really excited. 
Um, I'm going to take this on in a much different way than GCD has been used to. We're going to start scanning the vehicle um, and we're going to try doing some renderings in CAD. We got the rendering, he lays it out in the computer, and now we can sit down and drill down the design details, still giving him room to be creative, not to pigeonhole him into one design. And also it helps us when it comes to fit and finish, that way we know everything is laser perfect. Hey Tyler. Hello. You working on the uh, 3D stuff, huh? Yep, so basically what this is, is these guys right here. Yeah. Front panel, I guess you're gonna set the the door handle there and then build off of that. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. It's gonna give us uh, the ability to do a lot of creative stuff, especially like that. We can physically see the piece itself. Yeah, you can get all the angles. You can kind of see if you want to like. Awesome. All right, man, well, I'll let you get to work and then uh, good job. Thanks. So what I like to do to help my creative process is let's get started with the seat. So I had Julio go ahead and stitch up one of the cushions for the front seat. I take that piece and now that is my inspiration going forward. It helps me look at the diamond proportion, the lines, the color of the leather, the tightness of the seat. Um, it also helps Julio get kind of in the mood to go ahead and finish that because he's going to have to go ahead and get in that back seat and make one from scratch. So we have a 72 Ford F100 rolling in today, and it's one of my favorite trucks. This thing's pretty awesome. It was a restoration at one point. The client purchased it, obviously wanted to make his own changes on it, put his own personality on it. Started a lot of it, you know, swapped out the motor, swapped out the transmission. He's, he's a super busy person, and sometimes you just, between work and family and responsibilities, you just don't have the time. His his sentence to me was, I'm bringing you all of this and I want to come in and drive it out of here. That's the end goal. So that's the goal that we're reaching for. The bed is off of it. We are putting a new bed floor in. There's currently none in there. We're going to be tubbing out the wheel wells um, to fit the, the larger tires that he's bringing us. So we have numerous parts for the 72 F100 that we're going to be installing. Uh, everything front end to brake lines to drivetrain to suspension. Uh, I can't wait for to get it all done. I can't wait for the customer to see it. I think they're going to be really excited. That we're going to have to the tunnel that's in there for the transmission. Uh, the control arms now are changed, so we do, do have to cut the inner wheel wells. So it's like a whole laundry list of a lot of little things, which add up to you know quite a big project when you think about it. So once we're all set with the mechanical and assembly, we're gonna send it on over to Gil for a bench seat and some other interior components. And I can tell you right now, I can't wait to see this thing drive out of here. It's gonna be a gorgeous truck. We're back on the 1969 Mustang. Tyler has officially finished all the rear panel fabrication. It's now handed off to Guido to go ahead and start padding it and wrapping it. So the client for the 1969 Mustang stops by the shop, throws a little news on us. He wants the entire dash wrap. Now I'm not just talking about the dash pad itself, but the face of the dash, the lower dash, everything wrapped in leather. So Guido's gonna have to get started on the pad itself. Not an easy task, given the shape of that dash. So when Guido and I sat down and went over this dash pad, we came up with the approach. He's gonna go ahead and make it in three pieces. So each of the eyebrows itself, what goes over the gauge, what goes over the clock, will be wrapped separately. Then he's gonna have to go ahead and do a middle section. And it has to look like it's factory. So he's gonna go ahead, do a mold of it, fiberglass it, Make sure it fits nice and tight. Add a little Bondo when necessary, because that's gonna have to get wrapped in leather and it's gonna have to fit all together seamlessly.
So today we're gonna to be working on the 72 Ford F100 pickup truck. We're gonna remove the bed and replace the center section with a brand new OEM replacement. Uh, we have a lot to do with it and some of the things that we're gonna start with are widening the rear wheel tubs. The customer's gonna be running a larger rear wheel so that we can use the inner fender wells to widen the existing. And so in effect, we'll widen the wheel wells but it'll look factory, it'll still have the factory stamping uh, and it's gonna look really good. We've made quite a bit of progress on our 72 F100. Bob and Dan made quick work of getting the uh, bed floor in. They cut the wheel wells and they tub that out. So all of the welding is done. All of the um, grinding is done. We've actually undercoated, Cova undercoated the entire new part uh, of the bed plus up inside, you know, just make sure everything's cohesive. On the 1969 Camaro, Tyler's going to really take the reins and focus on the panels, the door panels and the rear panels, just to start, because he's got a lot more work to do than that. So today I'm working on this 1969 Chevy Camaro, and I'm just building the new door cards. I'm getting them all set up so that way we can do the new door panels. I find what's best is to take the design, once it's finalized in the computer, get it onto the physical panel. So that way we're discussing proportions on the door itself, not just in a drawer. Hey Tyler, what are you working on? Hey bud. So I have that 69 Camaro here and I'm putting the door cards together. Okay, so I'm you just got getting... the EVS all set, beautiful. Yep. Got, got the it. rails on, nice. Yep. So now I'm basically just identifying my major points. So. Clearly, I need to make sure that number one, whenever I build something off this panel, I'm not going to hit the dash when the door closes. So yeah. I have to basically mount all the, make sure and identify all the conflicting points in the car where things could actually hit when the door opens and closes. I'm um, getting the handle and the latch. Because I mean, that's the consistent oriented. part. I mean, that's the part we can't move. So that, yeah. that's where you're going to start with the handle and then kind of yep. we'll the, use the that as a reference. And then I can basically get the seat in, identify where the seat's gonna lay in contrast with the rendering that we have, and then get all of the major shapes built inside of here. Huh? So there's a large handle section, um, which is like a rail. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try to recess the handle in behind the rail, so you'll never actually see the handle okay. um, from a frontal view, but from where you're sitting, you'll just see the You can reach in and grab it. Yeah. You can lift up. Yeah, just getting the proportions right. I know the rendering gets you to a certain point, but realistically, once you get it in the car, you, you know, it, you got to tweak it. Cause, uh, always. You know, that, <laughs> hand, that handle doesn't <laughs> move. Yeah, it is. You know, we can tweak the drawing, but you can't tweak the handle. Awesome. All right, man, I'll let you get to work. Thank you very much. No awesome. Problem. Thank you. So today I'm going to be working on the 72 F100 and my main focus today is the front end. What I'll be doing is working on the uh, fitting, the inner fender wells, as well as the radiator support, making sure everything lines up, everyone, everything fits as it should be uh, before it goes off to be power coded. Cool. Dan had started with, along with Scott putting some of the front end together because we do have to finish making those cuts. Uh, we have the correct rad support. and. 
all those things will actually be sent out for, for sandblasting and powder coating, just so everything looks the same. Everything's uniform, everything's nice and clean. And, uh, and once that's done, we have to remove all the trim because that, we have new trim that's getting painted. And um, the key is to remove the trim that's on there without scratching the paint that's on there. So I'm gonna have Rich do that because he's really good at that. Doing all of our brake lines, our fuel lines. We have the new harness that's on its way, so we have to put that in. And there's a couple little minor things um, that need to be done. And he's now added the interior, which we had originally discussed, we weren't sure, but he did add that, so that'll go off to Gil for a nice new bench seat, door panels, and, and carpet, which is, I think really it needs it. I think it's just gonna set it off real nice. Wrapping the dash is not an easy task, and this 1969 Mustang dash is definitely not an easy task. So Guido's gonna have to go ahead and take this brand new dash pad we got, sand it down, prep it, take that nice and prepped dash, glue some patterns on it, make some patterns for the leather, for the eyebrow pieces. When it's all said and done, he has to now wrap it in leather and put it all together and present it as a finished, completed dash, just like factory except with a lot more work and a lot more leather. Guido, you got this thing wrapped up? Yes, finally finished, Beautiful ready to piece. go Beautiful in the piece. car. Oh yeah, yeah. looks good, client's gonna love it. This yeah. one was tough, huh? I mean, you had to do a lot to this one. It was uh, a lot of work, a lot of step. But in order to do the stitching, I mean, a nice and perfect stitching, I gotta make a um, different step. Um, and different step, different piece. This is one piece. This is another piece of the same, just a mirror piece. And the center, it wasn't there. I made the, the oh, piece. Center cap, huh? uh, the, yeah, the center. Now what's this this yeah. thing? You, what did you make this thing out of? Uh, I did it in fiberglass. First, I, I, I made a molding, a template. Wow. Then I used the template to make the fiberglass piece. See, it's nice and clean, the vent opening. Yeah, it's clean. This is yeah. nice, nice Perfect. and smooth, everything's tight. Everything is nice. nice. Now this one's uh, this one's looking good. I can't wait to see it in the car. So now you got to wrap the whole under dash too. Now huh? yeah, everything. I just have the other piece. This is separate. This is another, gonna be another piece. All leather. All leather. <laughs> all leather. Yeah. And then nice. I'm ready to go in the car. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Looks Ooh. beautiful. Perfect. Good. Sure. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the 55 is Koba's pet project, or his baby, so to speak. And I mean, from the initial body work after the metal work, which is, you know, obviously you have these big, you know, pieces that you've repaired. So it takes a lot of heavy body work, and then you dial it into the finer body work, and then you dial it in, it gets, you know, primed, and then you block it, and you dial it in, and then you gap it. We always do two primes. Um, it's always good to make sure it, and the paint job is, is exceptional um, because this way, you know, even after you prime and you, and you block, sometimes there's little things that rear their ugly head, but when you reprime it, you can get all those extra little things that you may have missed the first time. And Koba has this attention to detail that's unmatched. And he has been, I, I think it's his best friend, <laughs> this car. He's been working on it for so long. His heart is in it, his uh, finger, nails or fingerprints are in it at this point. I don't think he has fingerprints left after all the sanding. And uh, it's, I'm excited because it gives Jay uh, a much more, um, I would say perfect canvas uh, for, him, for him to lay that paint. Yeah. 
good. So everything all set to go. Um, we have it scheduled for Jay to get it for paint. So I just want to make sure everything has been good. Where are you at right now? Today, yesterday, the day before, I go over all that little things. Um, perfections was fixed, was primed. Now need to be scuffed. Okay. And ready for Jay. So it looks like everything going good. But after scuffing, anyway, I gotta check every square inch. Okay. To make Perfect, ready for uh, Jay. Okay. Yeah, we got a couple couple days left before we have to uh, before he it goes into the booth. So plenty time. So all right, good. It'll be all right. right. Yeah, no. I mean, I looked it over before. It looks amazing. It looks really good. So mm -hmm. I'm really happy with it. I think the uh, the client's gonna love it. I'm excited. We saw the did you see the little car? That's so cute. You saw that, right? And that's gonna be the paint color. I just it kind of gives you an idea of what the overall look is gonna be when it's done and. And this thing is going to be just amazing with that yeah, color. I love that's it. That's really perfect choice yeah. for this car. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. I will yes. let Jay know it's uh, it's ready for him to take. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Paula. Looks good. Looks good. In the with the 55, the next step is actually just to hand it off to Jay. Cope uh, and I have looked it over. Everything is good to go, and we give it our two thumbs up and our blessing. And uh, Jay's the lucky winner of, uh, of a 55 Chevy that he's going to be, oh my God, doing such a great paint job on. I can't wait. You got this thing wrapped up, huh? Um, Get it wrapped up. Yeah, this was fun yesterday again, this one. Yeah, this is real fun. Two people to get it in. Yeah. I think we should have done them all with roll cages. No, in there. this one, and this roll cage is really tight. Yeah. I don't even know how you got that thing in there up top there. That's it's, it was, it was, without two people, there's no way to do it. Not by myself, anyway. And there's basically no room here on the edge to get no, that tucked in. No, just enough to get enough. it in. Barely. I mean, I can just barely fit the knife through there now. So. It's just, it is what it is. Well, it looks nice and tight, though. It looks good. It's good. Awesome. Just gonna wrap it up now. Beautiful. All right, man, I'll let you get back to work. All right, man. Studio. We got the 55 Chevy delivery in the booth. I got the formula up on the screen. Get ready to start mixing paint. Got our paint all mixed. It's on the gun. Ready to start painting. Our 55 
Chevy and it's paint day. Um, one of the best days because that's the first thing people look at. And I have to say it's been such a short time since we've been here. Um, six months and two weeks from the time it rolled into the shop and was dropped off to the time of paint. Metal work, body work, two poly primes and here we are. So excited. Uh, the color is phenomenal. It's called Sea Mist. It's a tr traditional 50s color, um, so it's absolutely going to look beautiful on this car. So, Jay's finished with the paint, and I'm so excited to see it out of the booth later. Uh, we'll let her sleep right now and cure. But the next steps, it's going to go quick. Uh, we're going to marry the beautifully painted motor to the transmission. We're gonna get that all in, uh, get everything onto the firewall before we put the fenders and the, and the front together. And we have some wiring, some gauges, and then it's off to Gil to assemble the interior. And it's, I can't, I can't believe, it's, uh, he'll have it for car show season. How amazing is that? He dropped off at the end of car show season, he'll have it back for car show season, all fresh and new. How was your podcast? I'm sorry I missed it. I uh, with the allergies last week from the mm, weather. Allergies. I still have my cough. It was it was good. It was actually a really good podcast. Um, I like those guys. It was very uh, very car centric. It was. I, I enjoyed myself, and hopefully the audience enjoyed themselves. Too. Yeah. Well, the fact that they knew little facts about us, which was nice, that they yeah. that they you know kind of researched ahead of time. I was shocked when he pulled up my little dance move. It's a little caught off guard there. That's all right. So let's talk about work. I know, yeah. I know, we don't like to do that in personal time, but um, how was the week? Uh, week was great. Just got to work on a Camaro, which is one of my favorites. Not my favorite year, but one of my favorite kind of cars. So we did the uh, '69 orange, but everybody calls it okay. red. So I don't know what color it is. It, 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 it has. It depends on the light you look at it. I'm gonna go yeah. orange. Yeah, uh, no, it's. And uh, so we got the headliner in Julio. Got the one seat done, and then um, Tyler made some progress on the panels. Okay. Got all the insulation in, so it's moving along right. nice. Uh, it was yeah, kind good. of a full week of that car. Good. Yeah, no, it's, uh, the rendering is nice. I'm looking forward to the end, end result. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So. Yeah. So. I, um, we got the 55 Chevy painted. That's mm. crazy. Um, and, we got, and we painted the little one, the little uh, die, die cast, cast one. Oh, my yeah. God, it's so cute. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to, I think I'm more excited about getting rid of that than I am the other car. But anyway. Do we have um, to do an interior on that one too? No. No. Okay, no. no, but it was funny because Jay's like, oh, don't I have little wheels that I have to paint? Because the, the uh, 55, we're painting the rims also. So. I wonder what. Hmm. I don't know. But yeah. anyway, I'll have to ask him um, and see if he wants us to, to do that for him. I'm not sure. He only gave me the model. Yeah, I can't wait to get that one in the shop to do the interior stuff. So. Yeah, soon, soon. Yeah, real soon because yeah. Well, you guys got to put it together now, so. Well, you can kind of work on it too because we'll be working on the front if you need to get in there and do some work. Sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, so that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. That went quick, six months. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Um, next week. Next week. Oh, I have. Uh, oh, oh, I'm so excited. <gasps> I go to the winery. Uh, the pieces that we made for the new like boutique part of the winery that they're doing. Um, really oh, excited. That's the one Bob was on. Uh, Bob did the, yeah, he did the tailgate and then we did a little surprise piece, which I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to tell you, okay. this is a surprise piece. And we're giving that to them. They're going to have it as part of the new, um, they're like doing a whole new tasting room, kind of like doing this whole vibe. It's called Willow's Garage and Winery. It's still at Applewood, but, um. Is that what you're indulging in? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't. I can't do that. It's a little, too, I don't drink whiskey, so it's a little too much for me. So I'll stick with my wine. And uh, what do you got going on next week? Next week, I am going to speak at a career day in Patterson, New Jersey for high school kids. I know. I know. And they picked you. It's, a, it's a, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I'm sure I'm they exhausted the list of people and I was the last call they made. <laughs> no, well, no, but seriously, it's, it's great to. Yeah be a part of it, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, good. Just make sure to keep it clean. Yeah, absolutely. Only good advice. Well, you want me to write stuff down for you? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I'm bringing some special guests with me, so. Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully they make sure you behave. I'll talk to them ahead of time. Probably not. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I'll wait for the phone call then to come and pick you guys up. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to... Oh, I'm so excited. Yay. Cheers. So cheers. <laughs>
Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.